prestigious history of African sailing the official story makes us believe that black people were the only people in the world who never sailed. Because of their inferiority, they never set foot outside of Africa. We will continue to see that this is completely untrue, because not only the Africans had fleets, but their ability to drive water was indeed obvious. According to Afro-American historian David Imhotep, human sailing existed more than 120,000 years ago. We go back to a time when all the modern humans who populated the earth were black and living in Africa. It is this prehistoric sailing that enabled the Africans to cross the Atlantic Ocean to populate America 65,000 years ago. Even through this navigation, the African came to Australia 50,000 years ago. This article will focus more on African navigation, as what may be called the historical period, I since the first Egyptian pharaonic dynasty. Sailing in pharaonic times, 3300 BC to 300 AD, Egyptian sailing until the last decades and perhaps even today, the Bajamers made papyrus boats on Lake Chad. These boats were the first to be used by the ancient Egyptians before the advent of the pharaonic dynasties. It will never be said enough that Egypt was the result and achievement of all the accumulated experience in Africa in 170,000 years. Under the reign of Pharaoh Snefru in the 4th dynasty, boat building improved. Africans formerly bought cedar from blacks in the Middle East, Phoenician. They built boats that were up to three wagons long. Pharaoh Snefru in the middle Snefru commissioned the construction of 60 30 meter long boats in a year, then 351 meters. This is about three times as long as the Santa Maria, the boat with which Christopher Columbus reached America. Pharaoh Sahur of the 5th dynasty was the first to order a trip to the Holy Land punt, as did Pharaoh Hatshepsut of the 18th dynasty later. Hatshepsut, determined to know God's land to receive blessings during her reign, commanded, in what she considered the greatest achievement of her life, the journey of five 20-meter long boats from Abju, Abydos. The ships led by a Sudanese reached the Red Sea from a Nile Canal. From there they arrived at Punt, which Mr. and Mrs. Diop considered to be Zimbabwe and its surroundings, for there was found the royal patron of Jahuti Mesu. It is noteworthy that Jahuti Mesu was the heir to the throne, rightful successor of Hatshepsut and then master of Punt. In 1969, the Norwegian anthropologist and archaeologist Thor Heyerdahl tried to prove that even the primitive Egyptian boat made of papyrus could cross the Atlantic. The first boat, R.A., built by the peoples of Lake Chad, left Morocco and sank after 5,000 kilometers around the West Indies. In 1970, a second upgraded boat, the R.A. 2 left Morocco and reached Barbados. This showed that the Egyptians really could cross the Atlantic. The boat of Pharaoh Khufu, its length is 43 meters. She cannot travel by sea. It must have been used for religious ceremonies. Engraving of the expedition of Pharaoh Hatshepsut to punt the Temple of Bahari reconstruction of a boat from the punt expedition by the University of Boston. Carthaginian navigation The Black Phoenicians founded the Republic of Carthage in 814 BC. In modern Tunisia, Phoenicians were the greatest seafarers of African antiquity. They were the first people to bring civilization to Europe. They were also the lords of the Mediterranean, who crossed them in the name of their Egyptian brothers. They left their mark in Britain, where they took raw materials for their infrastructures or the African spirituality cult. Engravings in Mexico proved that it is a Phoenician who steered a boat on which the Sudanese, until then masters of Egypt, around 700 BC, landed in America. As for the Phoenician navigation of Carthage, it reached its peak during a period of wars between the Carthaginians Amilcar and Hannibal and the Roman Empire. The Carthaginians had 350 boats at a certain point, including 36-meter-long triremes operated by 170 oarsmen. The most stunning boats in their fleet were the Quinquiremes. They were handled by five rows of 270 oarsmen, which were arranged in a two-story building and carried 120 soldiers. The quinquiremes of blacks could carry no more than 400 people. Point 3D reconstruction of the port of Carthage in Tunisia today unknown author sailing in the imperial era, 380, 1500, 
sailing on the east coast black people in the rich Swahili civilization, Tanzania Kenya, had them tape. It was a boat weighing over 70 tons and big enough to cross the Indian Ocean to give an elephant to the Chinese in the 13th century. There are still many Swahili names that refer to all types of boats. It is important to note that the amazing wealth of Somalia, Kenya, Tanzania, Mozambique, and Zimbabwe, the Monomotapa Empire, needed an important fleet to trade with Madagascar, the Arab world, China, India, Southeast Asia, and Australia. The ancient Mozambicans, very proud and dressed in silk, were therefore not impressed by the boats of the Europeans who arrived in the 16th century. The sailing techniques of the East Coast were strongly influenced by the Arabs, who until then were the political rulers of the world. At that time, they were mainly responsible for the shipment of goods on the Indian Ocean. Them tape sailing in Imperial Morocco since historical science has returned possessions to the blacks of North Africa before their bleaching around the 8th century, everything that happened there, including the brilliant civilization of Imperial Morocco, that is, the African historical heritage. Sailing in Imperial Morocco took on its full size under the rule of the black Almoravid king Yusuf ibn Tachfin. He fought against the Christians of Spain and had an important fleet that could sail the entire Mediterranean. The presence of Moroccan boats is evident on the coasts of Syria and Palestine, where they used to fight Christians. It is during the following dynasty of black Almohads that Moroccan sailing reached its peak. Abd al Mumin, the first king of this dynasty, had a fleet of 400 boats. These boats were at various ports in Almohad in the Maghreb, Libya, and Spain at anchor, all of these areas were ruled by black Moroccans. The Almohads became lords of the Mediterranean, so Egypt asked to be one of their protectorates to benefit from their powerful fleet. The black dignitaries of the Maghreb play chess in Spain, source, the Golden Age of the Moors, Ivan van Sertima, page 29 there is no description of the boats used by these two dynasties. But the Arab fleet, the mightiest in the world, had boats ten times bigger than those of Christopher Columbus. Given the Arab influence on the Maghreb, one can imagine what the boats of Imperial Morocco looked like. Sailing in West Africa The Niger River and its magnificent civilizations also knew an important naval experience. During the era of the Malian Empire, the Bozoans made cargo ships capable of carrying tons of goods. During the demise of these civilizations with the destruction of the Songhai by the black king of Morocco Ahmed al-Mansur, the Askia, emperor, ordered the evacuation of the capital Gao with the help of 3,000 boats. The Portuguese Catamosto, who sailed on the Gambia River in the 15th century, faced the defensive attack of the blacks, who were grouped in groups of 30 in large boats carved into a log. But it was with Mansahabua Bakery 2 of Mali that in Sena Gambia 200, then 2,000 boats were built for their trip to America in 1,311. Christopher Columbus himself noted the testimonies of Portuguese sailors, who told him that there were boats that left Africa to America. In addition, Indians from Haiti told him that black traders came to them with big boats to trade spears called Gona slash Guanin 2. Columbus had one of these spears analyzed in Spain, and it turned out to be made of a metal consisting of 18 parts of gold, 6 parts of silver, and 8 parts of copper, which are absolutely identical to those of West Africa, metal that is the Mandingos Ghana slash Ganon called Dot Munsahabua Bakery Kita 2 crosses the Atlantic Ocean at the head of his fleet of papyrus boats, illustration by Kefra Burns. In short, Africa had considerable naval experience during the Pharaonic and Imperial periods. And thanks to this technology she was able to sail the Mediterranean, the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean.